Hello, I'm Kelly Delaney and let's do a reading check-in video. Hi, I'm Kelly. If you're new here, welcome. I talk about books and writing. If you're not new, you know that whenever I'm sitting next to my poorly made bed in front of my TBR shelf, it means my children are home. So it's spring break. We did not go anywhere. So we are in the very rainy, windy, not terribly cold, but still chilly, uh, northern Midwest. And my kids are all being good and quiet, hopefully. So I'll get this uh, video done. I decided to take a little bit of a different format approach with this video, which I'll talk more about the end. I'm not going to bore you with this if you don't want to listen to it. But um, in this video, I'm going to talk about what I've completed reading so far in March and what I'm planning to read in April and just sort of like a little bit more of a overview of all that stuff rather than a traditional TBR slash wrap up video. So let's start with everything I read in March. If you have been following me or just watched my February wrap up, I had a really rough reading month in February. So I wanted to, I just like couldn't get books read. And so um, this month I wanted to read some short ones and sort of just like get those under my belt. So I felt a little better about getting some titles read this month. So I started by finishing How to Keep House While Drowning by K.C. Davis. And I started this book in like September. And you know what? I loved this book. This is really good if you're ever going through a hard time or you know someone who's going through a hard time and it's their job to take care of their house. They should read this book. Um, in the fall, I was having a hard time and that's why I got the book. And it did help me. But reading it now was even better because she has the best advice and just taking this like one tiny piece of advice was so helpful and it's give yourself the gift of paper plates once a week and I know that sounds stupid but like some nights when I'm trying to when I've like literally just finished the cleaning the kitchen for the day and it's like 4 30 and I know I have to make dinner on like you know three pots and pans and then have silverware and plates and everything for six people just having six plates you don't have to clean is really really nice so this is a lot about like how to not lose your mind while trying to keep your house clean and i really enjoyed it <laughs> not what i usually talk about this channel so let's continue the next book i read is the duchess which is book two in the scandalous ladies of london by sophie jordan i got an arc here's the cover of it and actually it's coming out today the day that I'm filming which is March 26th um I actually I read the first one which was called The Countess and I didn't love it I thought it was fine this one I liked a lot more it's very much a run-of-the-mill um historical romance like it's not one of those that blew me out of the water but I had a lot of fun with it our main heroine is uh, Valencia and she is a recently widowed duchess and she had a horrible marriage and our hero is Rain. Can you hear my daughter's playing librarian? Because that's what they're playing, right? Oh, <laughs> back to the Duchess. So uh, Valencia is our heroine and then Rain is our hero and he is the new Duke. And he um, is from Wales and he brings his unmarried sisters. He has an unbelievable amount of sisters. I can't remember exactly how many now. It's like 13 or something. And he brings the six unmarried ones to London to try and make matches for them. And he kind of ends up sort of like hiring Valencia to help his sisters in society because they've grown up in Wales. Like they don't really know what to expect in London. And then Rain and Valencia fall in love. And so it was very good. I really enjoyed it. I'll continue on with the series. Um, it's a different format than like a than Sophie Jordan's other series because you have more narrators than the hero and heroine. And in this one, Valencia's stepmother is one of the narrators. So I assume she's going to be the... Um, heroine in the next book and she's like much much younger and married to Valencia's widowed father and um it ends with a bit of a twist like getting you in interested in her story. If you watch my videos you might have watched a reading vlog I did in March and during that reading the vlog I read Ruthless Files by Rebecca Ross which is the second book in uh the Divine Rivals duology and um I was like so stressed out reading this book the entire time because I just felt such a connection to <laughs> Iris and Roman, like an insane connection. And um, I will say this book is, was a five-star read. It was fantastic. Um, I don't really read YA. I don't really read YA. I don't really like it. I loved this book and I loved Divine Rivals. And I, I just felt so amazing. I felt so like swept up by this world. So 
the premise in the first book is that there is this like fantasy war going on between a god and a goddess and humans are kind of getting swept into it. And Iris's brother has enlisted to fight for Enva, who's uh, the goddess. And then the god she's fighting against is Dakra, I think is how you pronounce it. And Iris works for a newspaper and she decides to become a war correspondent. Roman is her rival at her newspaper and then he also decides to become a war correspondent. And the story goes from there and it's, there's magical typewriters where these letters get sent back and forth through typewriters. There's magic in the cities, which is very cool, and in the countryside. It's very much a fantasy war with World War I feels, like aesthetics, because it's trench warfare, and the countryside feels very much what you picture, you know, World War I European countryside to look like and feel like. Um, I adored this duology. I mean, I don't really reread books. But I would reread this series if suddenly I found myself trapped in my house and I couldn't get any new books. I would reread this series. Uh, next, I also vlogged about this one. I read Summer in Skagway by Kate Renegri, I think is how you say her last name. And um, this one I think I give like three stars, 3.5 stars. It's a contemporary romance about a man named Tanner who lives in Alaska. He has a troublesome ex, so he does an old-fashioned like pretend to be my fiancé so my ex will leave me alone. And this woman named McKenna who lives in Seattle comes up for the summer to pretend to be his fiance because she really needs money. She's gotten let go from her uh, summer job. She's a professor during the year and um, she pays for her grandmother to be in a nursing home. So she needs money to pay for that, to continue to pay for that. While I found this story to be um, like a like normal contemporary romance feels, there were a couple instances in it that I really didn't like. And that made it a little hard to enjoy the story. I don't want to give you too many spoilers, but I really don't like when um, an ex is the conflict. So like if a crazy female ex is the conflict, I don't really like that. Unless you're in like a fantasy world and the crazy ex is like magical in some way <laughs> or like truly terrible, like a tyrant, then I don't really like crazy ex as being the, um, the source of conflict in a relationship. And then there was another very questionable consent scene that I really didn't like. And it's not going to be what you immediately think of. So I don't think I'll continue with this series. I don't know. I wouldn't like not recommend it to people because it was very like Alaska and summer vibey. But there were just a couple things in there that gave me pause. Okay. <laughs> this is a weird review. I read Nantucket Nights by Ellen Hildebrand. And this was a two-star read. Um, I love the other three books I read by Ellen Hildebrand. Okay, so I read the first like 20 pages of this and I was like, when did she write this? This was the second book she ever wrote and I think she's written like 45 now. So this is not, maybe not 45, but she's written definitely over 20. So this came out in 2002 and she's definitely read, written at least a book a year since then. And this was just not the Ellen Hildebrand I come to expect from from having read The Five Star Weekend, The Hotel Nantucket, even Winter Solstice. Is that what it's called? No. Winter Street. That was the first one. Winter Solstice is a different one. So I read Winter Street this year, which is her Christmas one. This one had some, some big yikes moments in it. So the premise is that you have Kayla, Antoinette, and Val, and they're three really good friends. And they've been friends since... They were in their early 20s and they like lived together in the summer on Nantucket. And they had this night, they call it night swimmers, where they, it's Labor Day weekend, they go out to the beach, they swim naked and they each tell each other a secret. So they're not really good friends other than they're like each other's secret keepers. Like they see each other throughout the year, but like when you delve into these women's friendships, they don't really seem like good friends. In all honesty, they all, every single adult in this story, is a horrible person. Like I, I like not even like a flawed person. Like they make decisions where you're like, that is a horrible person, a horrible person. So you can't really say what they do that would make you think that. But like, I don't, Ellen Hildebrand's books aren't about horrible people. I think also at this point, she was kind of deciding whether she was going to write more like thriller mystery or like contemporary fiction. I definitely think she's better at like the contemporary fiction because this was kind of a mix between the two because there's a mystery in it. One of the women goes missing and then like her whole life, they like find out what's going on with her life and it's a disaster. I didn't like this book at all. <laughs> so obviously I only gave it two stars because I don't 
one star books I finish. I don't one star anything on Goodreads. If I if I don't finish it, I don't review it unless I like need to for arc reasons, but I won't give it any I won't rate it. But um two stars is my lowest rating on Goodreads and that's what Nantucket Nights got. So if you are like falling in love with Ellen Hill right now, don't go this far back. That's definitely made me realize like I shouldn't go deep into the backlist with her. Probably post 2007, I think I'm going to stick from now on. The month really turned around after this. So next I read Listen for the Lie by Amy Tintera and I really enjoyed this thriller. I gave it 4.5 stars. Um, so it's a very cool premise. So Lucy and Savvy are best friends and then one night Savvy gets murdered and Lucy can't remember what happened, but she's got a traumatic brain injury and she's got Savvy's blood on her and she's like carrying a tree branch. And so everyone in her town thinks she killed Savvy, but they can't prove it. So she's moves, she lived, this happens in Texas, she moves to California. And many years later, I think we're at like 10-ish years later, um, a podcaster decides to research this murder and bring it all back up. And he's interviewing everyone in town and like everyone's secrets are coming out and it was really good. And I absolutely loved the climax of this story. So if you have read this and you want to chat about like the big ending, oh my God, I would love so much for this to be made into like a movie or a mini series just to watch how that played out because it was so good. And then the last book I completed so far this month I finished last night. It was Skylight Confessions by Alice Hoffman. It was a five-star read. I cried so hard <laughs> reading this book. This is not a happy book. This is very sad. And I tend not to like look up content warnings very often, but I'm gonna give you one in this, just so you know. Because this is a, it's a, it's a spoiler, but I feel like you should know it because I don't know if I would have read this book this month. I have another Alice Hoffman on my shelf, I think right over here, Here on Earth. Is that it? Yeah. And I might have read this one instead this month because I wanted to read Alice Hoffman. So the content warning is that it does have a character who has breast cancer when she has very small children, like a six-year-old and a brand new baby. And that was really hard for me to read. And I'm sure I'm not the only person who's watching this, who has had maybe like a family member or a friend who has died of cancer with small children. And so that was extremely difficult for me to read. It's written beautifully and the story is gorgeous and the characters are amazing and you just like feel them in your soul. But that was very difficult to read. So the premise of the story is we follow Arlen and John who meet when Arlen's very young and she has this like you know, it's magical realism how Alice Hoffman's always are that she, her father dies and she says like the next man she sees is going to be the man she marries and she sees John and she's very young. She's like 17 or 18 and he's like 20 maybe. He's in college and they have this like passionate affair that ends with them being married. And then you f follow this, them, their children, their family, this house that they live in. For, I was trying to figure out last night when I finished how many years it is. And I think it's about 40 years total that you follow them. And it's just really, really gorgeous. It's one of those Alice Hoffman books. Most similarly, I would say the feeling, the vibe, everything is very much similar to The Ice Queen in terms of like how sad it is. So that's probably the other Alice Hoffman book that just made me bawl. Like I shed a few tears reading The Red Garden. Same with The Invisible Hour. But these are books where you're just like, Oh, my heart. Like, this is so sad. This is so sad. Part of what makes these so sad is they're just so real. Like, obviously, they're magical realism. But, like, the loss in these is so realistic. And the pain and everything is just so realistic. So, absolutely beautiful. Will break your heart. And remember those content warnings. I also started three other books in March that I didn't finish yet. And I'm going to talk about each of those. So, the first is Big Swiss by Jen Began, and I'm on page 66. And okay, so here's the thing. I've had this book for a long time. I got this um, from, my feet are falling asleep, I gotta move. I got this from Aardvark Books when I did a collab with them like a year ago, probably. And um, I just hadn't picked it up. No reason really why. And then I watched a YouTuber who I really like, Alexandra Roslin. She goes by Lexi. 
And she read this in one day. She loved it so much. So I was like, okay, I should pick this up because I do really trust her. And I could see why people could get like swept up in this and just consume it. I'm not that person. It's not consuming me. It's one of those books that's purposefully written kind of batshit crazy, if that makes sense. So the narrator's life, the way she talks, it's all sort of like nuts. And like, it's not like magical realism though, but it's just like she lives in a house and there's like all these dead bees. And then you jump around in her past and she's like, and then I was hitchhiking and then my coworker killed himself and I found the body and like, and then my mother killed herself and I found the body. And there's just like a lot of that. And I think I will read this book that I'll finish it. I don't think I'm going to DNF it, but I think I'm going to read it really slow. Like, I think this is kind of going to be my like, I don't want to start a new book yet, but I want to read tonight. Like that kind of book for me. So I think I'll probably finish it over the summer. That's Big Swiss. And then I read very little of I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. I'm on page 16. So um, there's 67 pages in the first part. If you watched my March TBR, I talked about how I wanted to read the first part of this in March because that's the chapter or the section that's called March. And I think I will get to page 67 in March since it's March 26th and I don't really have anything that's like grabbing me right now since Big Swiss and I aren't really clicking. So um, it's a cute cottage corny classic. That's the best I can tell you right now reading 16 pages so far. So I will continue with this and probably get to page 67 this week. Like that's probably what I'm gonna do maybe even tonight. We'll see. And then lastly, I have to open my Kindle because I always say the title of this book incorrectly. I've had the arc for a really long time. Okay. It is Hunt on Dark Waters by Katie Robert. And I am on chapter three. And honestly, I just read the first two chapters one night when I couldn't sleep. And I don't even really remember what's happening very much. I think I'm kind of off Katie Robert. Um, the last one I read of hers, I didn't really like. And this one, I think it'll be fine. But I'm just like, I don't know. You know, sometimes you get like really into our author's writing styles and then you get off. And I feel like I'm kind of getting off her writing style. That doesn't mean I'm going to stay off of it. Um, I did decide I'm not going to continue reading the Dark Olympus series with the exception of I will read the Minotaur and Ariadne's book, which I think is coming out in early 2025. I might be completely wrong. That might be coming out in like two months or it might be coming out in 2026. But whenever that one comes out, I'm going to read it. Um, but so I've had that arc for a long time, though. I try to finish my arcs. So I think that's just going to be my insomnia book <laughs> this week, which hopefully isn't going to hit me too hard. But um, yeah, I think I'll just kind of use that as my I can't fall asleep book for now and eventually finish it. Okay, so that's everything I was reading in March. So now let's talk a little bit about what I'm going to read in April. Oh my gosh, this video is going to be so long. <laughs> I readjusted myself because I'm not going to give myself a very strict TBR in April. Um, I wanted to read 14 books from my physical TBR, uh, the ones that I had in January before I bought any new books. Okay, so here's what I ended up doing. I also was allowed to buy Book of the Month books, and I have been. Several. So here's what I ended up doing. I, I think I'm at like 11 that I've read and sold. So I've done a mix. I did sell a bunch of books because I was looking at that list and realizing there were some of them I was never going to read. And I did sit down and read like the first pages of quite a few of them before I sold them. So I sold The Berry Giant by Kazuo Ishiguro because I read like the first 10 pages and I just realized like once upon a time I maybe really would have wanted to read this, but it just wasn't something I was interested in anymore. I sold Broken Bonds by Jay Bree because um, I, read, I watched a review of it that said it's like a bully romance, which is like a hard no for me. I just don't like that subgenre at all. So I sold that. I sold um, The Kingdom of Copper because I decided I'm not going to finish that series. So there were just quite, there's more than that that I just can't think of right now. Quite a few that I sold and then read, I mean, um, Nantucket Nights, How to Keep House While Drowning, uh, Skylight Confessions, Big Swiss, and I Capture the Castle are all on that list, which I'm not counting Big Swiss and I Capture the Castle as completed yet. But so let me just go through a few of the ones I might read in April, but I am really going to just mood read whatever I feel like reading. I'm going to read. That's how I'm feeling this month. But so let's go through a lot of books. I am considering reading Lady Susan by Jane Austen. I don't know if I will though. I read the first couple letters a couple days ago when I was doing like the read the beginning. So I'm on page 
20 out of like 90, which is not many pages. So I might read this, but I'm going to try to focus on reading I Capture the Castle. So if I'm feeling like classic out, then I won't read it. I might read Rubble by Beverly Jenkins. If I'm feeling like I want to uh, read a historical romance, that might be on it. We'll see. I did um, when I went and sold a bunch of books. And I also sold a bunch of um, book of the month books. So I had done an unhaul video a few weeks ago and I put a lot, I put all those books up on Facebook Marketplace and I sold about half on Facebook Marketplace and so all the ones I didn't sell. I took those plus anything I unhauled from here to half price books, got $20 back for like 13 books and then I bought Bride. Because <laughs> I've never read Ellie Hazelwood and this seems like one I would like. It's like werewolves and vampires and that's my jam. So I bought this. So that's on the April CBR. I don't know if I'll read it in April, if I'll read it in May or when I'll read it. But that's a possibility as well if I'm feeling like paranormal romance. I told myself I was going to begin The Wheel of Time in March and I did not. So I might begin it in April. I'm not going to say I'm going to read this book in April. This book is like over 700 pages long. Wow, look at this glossary. Beautiful. Um... Yeah, so it's 771 pages long. So I'm not going to read this in April <laughs> in its entirety, but maybe I'll read a bit of it in April and get it started. If I go on like a paranormal romance kick after reading Bride, maybe I'll read uh, Lover Awakened by J.R. Ward, which is in the Black Dagger Brotherhood. It's about Zadist and Bella, and Zadist is a vampire. And I don't think Bella is. I think she's a human, but maybe she's a vampire. I don't remember. But if I just feel like I need to read more vampire romance after I read Bride, then I'll read this one too. Next in my big, because I'm just going like this, so they're really not in any order, are my Book of the Month books I haven't read yet. So here's what we've got. The Great Divide by Christina Enriquez. I'm going to start this with this week. This is historical fiction about the building of the Panama Canal, and I do really want to read it. So I might begin this this week and then finish it in April. I could see it's actually not that long. Some books just look thicker than they are. It's only six, or it's only 600. It's only 320 pages. So in my brain, that looked more like 400. And then I have Shark Heart, which I want to read in a day because people have told me you can, and there's not that much text on the page. It's like very, looks very poetry-ish. And so that is going to be entirely dependent on weather because when I do a, a book in a day in April, I want to do it outside. So... If we have a really nice day in April, I'm going to read that outside. That I have time to read a whole book. If we don't, then I'll probably wait till May. Here come the kids. Clamoring up the stairs. And then lastly, I have This Spells Love by Kate Robb. Okay, so I want to finish this before my book, The Hedge Witch, comes out in May. Because I want to see if it's a comp. I don't think it is. Because my book is not a rom-com. But I think this one is like a witchy rom-com. So this also is not very long. 321 pages. So I am going to read this in April because I want to be done with it before May 14th when my book comes out. That was everything from Book of the Month. So now let's move more into my backlist. And I'm going to start not all of, I'm not going to talk about all of these because a lot of these I have no interest in reading right now. Looking at you, the Aeneid. I have Firelight by Sophie Jordan, which I bought accidentally. And I considered selling this back when I was at Half Price Books. But then I just decided, you know, I really like Sophie, Jor Sophie Jordan a lot. And this is a YA with dragon shifters. And I usually don't read YA, but I did love Ruthless Vows and I did love Divine Rivals. So maybe I should just give it a chance. Do I think I'm going to read in April? Probably not, but just in case. I mean, there's a chance. I just, all I want to read is like paranormal stuff in April. It doesn't happen often, but it might. And then I have Midnight at the Blackbird Cafe by Heather Weber. This is like a small town contemporary fiction story about a girl going home and like meeting her extended family she didn't really know. This seemed pretty cozy. This will probably depend heavily on if I'm in a cozy mood or if I want to read like thrillers and stuff like that, which I do sometimes. A few days ago, I wouldn't have put this on the list, but now I'm putting The Giver of Stars by Jojo Moyes on the list because I really like the podcast National Park After Dark. And they recently did an episode about the um, book women of Kentucky who like of Appalachia who were like librarians during the depression and would like take books to these like really secluded communities so people could have access to a literature and this is a fictionalized account of those women and I have always wanted to read it but kind of been like 
I don't know, just like not ready to start it. And I thought maybe this is the time to start it. I'm looking to see how long it is. It's 427, which is long, but not really in mass market because the pages are so short. So that's another maybe. Again, maybe I'll get a historical fiction kick after I read The Great Divide and I'll be like, give me more historical fiction. And if there is not a thriller that I like in Book of the Month, I might read The Distance Hours by Kate Morton. This is a big fat book and it's so gross. It's got like, I think mold on it and it's like almost 600 pages. And should I just throw this away? Tell me in the comments, should I just throw this away? Now I'm feeling like I should just throw this away. It looks so gross. I love Kate Morton, but this book is kind of disgusting. Where did I even buy this? I think I bought it at half price books. I can't believe they resold it like this, gross. But maybe I'll read this, maybe not. And then lastly, the book over here that I think I might read is Here on Earth by Alice Hoffman. If I just feel like I need to read another Alice Hoffman book, I usually like to give myself like a little bit of a break because they are kind of intense. Um, so this one is after 19 years in California, March Murray returns to the small Massachusetts town where she grew up. For all this time, March has been avoiding her own troubled history, but when she encounters Hollis, the voice she loved so desperately, the man who has never forgotten her, the past collides with the present as their reckless love is reignited. This dark romantic tale asks whether it's possible to survive a love that consumes you. The answer that March Murray discovers are both heartbreaking and wise, as complex as they are devastating. For in heaven and in our dreams, love is simple and glorious, but it is something altogether different here on earth. Alice Hoffman. If I could write like one person in the world, it would be Alice Hoffman. My dream. Such a good author. Okay, I'm going to clean this up and then I'm going to talk to you more about what is coming up in the future at this channel. Look, the angle is slightly different. Is that because I put it away in my tripod and then realized I forgot to talk about my arcs? It is. So I have quite a few arcs to read this month. <laughs> so I'm just going to open my Kindle so I can read them to you. Um, I already talked about Hunt on Dark Waters by Katie Robert, which I'm going to read very slowly, I assume, if I continue. Here are my other ones. I have Flaw by Olivia Mallow, which is a brand new book by someone who I know who used to write under a different name and is now writing under this name, but I can't, already got a little trouble about it. I can't say anything about who she is. <laughs> so that's my next arc I'm going to read. I'm probably going to start that in the next couple days. Um, I don't know much about it because I like going in kind of blind. So you'll get that soon. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say soon. Uh, I just got approved for Wake Me Most Wickedly by Felicia Grossman, which is a historical romance. I just got approved for Barbarian's Taming, which is an Ice Planet of Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. And I also just got approved for Jewel Me Twice by Cherish Reed, who writes contemporary romance. And this is a heist romance. And I do also have that pre-ordered, <laughs> like the paperback, but I wanted to read it sooner. So I got the arc. And I'm just trying to say there's one more thing on my Kindle that I might read this month. And it's um, it's a Grace Calloway. It's called Olivia and the Masked Duke. And, um, Grace Calloway is having like a big Twitter renaissance, kind of like Lindsay Sands did last year. And I'm always late. I'm always late to the party. So, um, I grabbed one of those that was on sale for my Kindle or maybe even free. I can't remember. Um, yeah, I mean, I have enough books for someone who is going to be alone on a beach for, I don't know, two months, but that's not going to happen. So um, I'll get my reading done when I get it done. But those are my arcs. Back to back to the video. I currently sounds like my kids are rearranging furniture. So I apologize if you hear any loud crashes. Okay. So I had kind of a weird um, epiphany this morning. Not really epiphany, but I was, it was like 6.30 and I was laying in bed and I was thinking about how in the next seven days I really wanted three videos to come out because I wanted to have my April TBR, my March wrap up, and then another video that I'm excited for to come out and how I didn't really have time to do that. <laughs> and so that's why I decided to do this video like this rather than doing a separate April TBR and then like a March wrap next week. And um, that might actually be something that starts happening. And that is because um, as we especially like look at summer coming up, it gets kind of hard for me to make more than one video a week. And I feel like um, I always have had a wrap up and a TBR. And so I'm only making four videos a month because some months only have four weeks in them. And one of them is a wrap up and one of them is a TBR that only lives two open spots for other videos. So I might some months do something more like this, like a combo of like what I've been reading and what is coming up to be read. And I think that's okay. Um, 
TBRs and wrap ups are very weird. Some months I get so many views on them. Like they're just like go crazy. And then some months I get barely any. So they're not super consistent. Uh, I did decide this month not to do a book of the month predictions video. And that was like threefold or fourfold or sevenfold or whatever the reasons. But one of the main reasons was that um, book of the month released four clues again. And I can't figure them out. <laughs> I'm just like not good at that, but everybody else can very easily. It's really easy once they release those clues to just put like book of the month clues. Cause I, at that point when they released those clues, I decided I wasn't going to do the video. So I just Googled book of the month clues and titles and you get four titles and you know, book of the month releases between four and seven books. And I don't really think it's that fun to do like a predictions video if we already know what four of them are. Cause then I'm kind of just guessing at like between one and three titles of what might be right. And so if they continue to do clues like that, I don't think I'm going to make a specific book of the month's prediction video, but I do think people really like seeing what's coming out, which is kind of how I've used that video. So I think I might transition into doing sort of like a what's coming out the next month and have, maybe I'll tell you like, oh, I think this one might be a big book of the month pick. I think this one might be an aardvark pick, which aardvark books, I'm getting more and more interested in them. The last couple of months, they've had like really good uh, lists. Like their books that they've been releasing have been really interesting. And I'm kind of like, can I get a second book subscription? I don't know <laughs> to think about it. But like there were a couple, they had a love song for Ricky Wilde, which I wanted so badly. And then they had another magical realism one, which I'm forgetting the title of right now, but I'll pop the picture up here. And um, so I think that maybe I might replace my book of the month predictions video with kind of like a, this was what is coming soon. So I'm just, you know, it doesn't, I mean, honestly, you don't even, you don't have to do anything about this. I'm just letting you know what videos might look like going forward. And who knows? I know that there was like some like discourse online about how Aardvark's clues are really good. And Book of the Month kind of changed their clues. And I think that Aardvark's clues are so good because they're really hard to figure out still, mainly because they do a lot of small presses and not a lot of books that have gotten a ton of hype. So it's harder to figure out. I do remember when they did Love Song for Ricky Wilde, I could figure it out from their clues. I'm um, sorry, the sun just came out. It's been like pouring all day. And so now my glasses are getting bad glare. Um, and so now I think of Book of the Month as like trying to re-figure out their clues. And like the last two months, I feel like they've given us too much. Like pull back a little. <laughs> so I don't want to know what all the books are before they come out. I like being surprised on the day that they release them. I like trying to figure out what some really good books might be. So um, especially coming up in the summer, I think I'm going to do more like a uh, get excited for these books coming out in the next month. And then I can still do like my list videos, which I really like, you know, like this month I did um, spring books. I have some fun ones coming up for April and May that I think everybody will like. And then I can also add in um, an occasional vlog, but those don't tend to do very well and they are such a pain to make. So probably keep doing those maybe like once a season. <laughs> so, and that's basically it. So you got a very long video with a lot of books that I will maybe read. You are not going to get my book of the month picks because um, I'm not going to wait for book of the month to release. I mean, if magically tomorrow morning when I'm editing this um, on March 27th, they release the picks that I will splice in right here a really quick what the picks are, what I'm picking. But honestly, from the clues, there was not a book that stood out like I wanted to read it. So I think I will either skip this month, pick one that they didn't have as a clue, or maybe when I read some sample pages, then I'll pick one. Um, or, I mean, sometimes I do the member fave thing, but I do have quite a few books to read right now. And also, um, if you've been around here for more than a year, May is my birthday month and I always go crazy and get myself like 20-ish books, not 20, but I like to buy like my summer TBR in May. So I'd like to get this TBR a little down in the next month, um, uh, before I go crazy in May. <laughs> okay. This was a really long video. If you're still here, thank you so much for hanging out for such a long time. And listen to me, go on and on about books I've read and books I'm going to read. If you'd like to write a comment, please let me know what your favorite book was you read in March or what you're most excited to read in April. If you're still here and you don't want to write words, give me an emoji that just screams April in your face. Flowers, sunshine, an umbrella, depending on where you live, if you have a very rainy April. And as always, I hope you're in the middle of a good book, about to start reading a good book, or about to start writing a great book. I'll see you soon.